Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all having a good morning out there. In today's video, I would kind of like to share with you guys my very first experience taking home an exercise as part of the entire interview process for a job out here in the Silicon Valley. Now, typically when you are applying for a job as sort of a junior developer, a lot of these companies, they actually want you to prove to them uh, whether or not you actually know how to program. So the typical process kind of looks like this, where you apply for the job, go through a phone screening, and if they like you, they'll invite you on for an on-site interview. And if all goes well, what they'll do, or some of these companies at least, what they'll do is they'll give you a pretty difficult take-home exercise, and usually this exercise is harder than what you'll get as a whiteboarding exercise. All right, so the exercise that I was given was to set up a server in the cloud, you know, somewhere in the internet, and to set it up so that a user can plug in a nested array, which kind of looks like this right here. And this nested array of stuff, what they wanted me to do was to flatten this array and kind of make it look like this right here. So this exercise I thought at the time was pretty difficult, but after spending a couple of hours doing it, it actually isn't all that hard. And in today's video, I'm going to go over exactly how to solve this challenge with you inside of Swift Playgrounds right now. All right, so let's go ahead and get started using an empty playground project using Xcode 9 beta, which is what this looks like right here, Xcode 9 beta. And I'm gonna start off today's video with a couple of examples as to what a nested array looks like and then what the flattened version of that array needs to be. So for example, what if we have a simple array that just has the value of one in it and this needs to be flattened into the exact same array like that. And if I have another array that has one, two, and three, this also needs to be flattened into one, two, and three. All right, so pretty basic and pretty simple right there. And in order to kind of up the difficulty of this exercise, we need to introduce a nested array of arrays. So this looks like that right there. So this array contains a value of one and it also contains another array that has a value of two in it. So in order to flatten this nested array, we need to flatten it into the values of one and two. Now, very similarly, if I have the value of one, and let's see, two and three, this needs to be flattened into one, two, and three. And then finally, if I change this so that I have the value of one inside of the array, the value of two, and then another array that's nested within the nested array, you can, for example, give it a value of three and four, and I believe I need another bracket to end that entire nested array. And to actually get the flattened array, we need the values, of, uh, the values of one, two, three, and four, like that. Okay, so these are the couple of examples that I wanted to give you first before we start out with the implementation. And why don't we begin with exactly what the function signature looks like right here. So this function is going to be called flatten array. And what kind of array do we want to flatten? Well, if you want to kind of start off easy first, you want to pass in this nested array parameter and you can think of it as an array of integers first. And at the very end, we have to return that flatten array of ints like so. Okay. So we have an error inside of our code right now because we're missing a return value for this function, which expects us to give an int back. So I'm just going to fix that by returning a blank empty array like that. All right, and down below, I can call this function flatten array with perhaps an empty array like that. And let's see, let result equals all of that and print out the final result like so. Okay, so what do you expect to get? Well, we get just this blank empty array. And to make it really obvious what's going on here, I'm going to add in the word result with a colon like that. And at the very bottom, we get result and the empty array. So pretty good stuff. And let's say we wanted to call this flatten array with the value of one. We can just do that. And that'll give us still a empty array because that is pretty much all we are returning. 
Okay, so how do we want to go about solving this implementation problem? Well, why don't we go inside of this method, this function, and loop through the nested array with a for loop of four elements in nested array. And let's just print out what each and every one of these elements are. So down here, we get the value of one, and you can also uh, plug in a parameter of one and two, and down here, you get one and two. So pretty good stuff there. And what I really need to do is I need to create some kind of array that I can start appending these elements onto. So let's say var, you know, uh, my, see my flattened array, that's how you spell it. If this starts off as an empty integer array like that, I can pretty much append all of these elements onto flatten array with the append call of element like that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And at the very end, I actually want to return the flattened array instead of just the empty array. And then the result <coughs> at the final last line right here is one and two. Okay, so we've basically handled the sort of the easiest base case of an array of integers for my nested array parameter. So let's move on to something that's a little bit more difficult. For example, this nested array of one an array of two like that. So let's try to plug in that inside of this parameter of the nested array. And you'll see right off the bat here, we get this error that says, contextual type int cannot be used with array literal like that. And what the heck does that mean? So basically it means that this array right here doesn't actually match this parameter type, which is an array of integers, because this contains an array that also has an array, which is, you know, pretty much a nested array. So in order to get this to work, we need to change this uh, type right here, this integer type, to type any instead, which can represent anything. For example, uh, integers or arrays or strings or just pretty much anything uh, you want to put inside of this guy right here. So with that change, uh, in place of the integer type, the element right here is actually type any right now because this is any. And this right here it is not allowing us to append onto my flattened array of integers because this right here isn't exactly an int yet. So let me just convert that to an int right there. And what that really does is it kind of gets the one correct while it's looping through. But the moment that we run into the array of the value of two, it crashes because we're casting it incorrectly as an integer. And that's what this error is telling us. And so the first thing I'm going to do is to first check if it indeed is an integer like that. Then I'm going to append it onto that array. And let's see what my program execution looks like now that that is fixed. And you see, the result that I get at the very end right here, when I call flatten array on all of this, is the array of just the value of one. So that's a pretty good start for our implementation right here. And the question is, how do I check whether or not the second element is an array? And if it is an array, how do I know to uh, add things onto this my flatten array guy so that I can get the two value uh, inside of this result? So. The first attempt that you should actually try is to first check if the element that we're looping through inside of this any array, if it is an integer array like so, then we will go through all of the elements inside of this array and we'll try to add it onto my flattened array. So I think I need an if right here. And I think I should be okay. All of the errors should go away. If this, I think I need an else if. There we go. That's the proper Swift syntax. And so if this element is an integer array, we can perhaps say this right here, my flatten array dot append some stuff, right? And so let's say, uh, let's nested uh, elements like this, uh, let it equal to element like that as this integer array. 
then we'll say uh, for you know num in nested elements I think I need to add a bang right here and then we will add all of these elements into the Maya flattener array by appending the num inside of it and I think I should be okay so you see at the very bottom right here we get results of one and two and this is because we've detected that the second element is just an integer array and then we start to append things onto my flatten array like so all right so that's the second step to this entire algorithm and the question now is what if we introduce a third nested array into the mix right here so for example if i have this as my parameter, which is one, two, and then the nested array of three and four. So let's see if I can even do that inside of this. So I'm just going to plug one, two, three, and four, and you see my result at the very end only contains the value of one. And so let's go through what is going on here. So basically, at the very first iteration of the nested array, we detect the one, which is this case, and then we add it into the my flattened array. And then because this right here is not an int, and it's also not an integer array because it's nested with stuff in it, it just skips that entire element and then returns us the final result of the value of one. So the solution to this problem is to perhaps, you know, check whether or not this element is an array of stuff. And then we perhaps do this check all over again to figure out if we need to add things onto my flatten array. So basically we execute this logic over and over again, perhaps with more and more if cases so that we can finally get a flattened array. So some of you guys can tell that that solution is not going to work because what happens if I have a third nested array. So for example, if I have one, two, three, let's see, three, and then we have another array, and then we end that, and that, and end that. And if we have this array right here, we actually have a, another nested array. So how do we actually solve this problem? Well, the way to actually implement the solution is to use something called recursion. So what I'm going to do is to comment out those couple of lines and instead of using this uh, iteration check of, you know, going through this array of elements and appending it onto my flattened array, I'm going to say let recursion, recursion result equals the flattened array call again. And I'm going to use the value of element right here. So let's call it with elements. All right, so this call right here actually gives us an error. And the problem right now is because element inside of our iteration, it's actually of type any. And this nested array, flatten array call, actually needs an array of any. So I'm going to cast this element into an array of any like that, and the error should go away. Okay, so what exactly is this recursion result? Well, I'm going to add this onto my flatten array and let's see what that result looks like. So let's say for num in recursion result, which is an array of integers, I'm going to say my flatten array and I'm gonna start appending things onto it using the variable of num. And then let's wait for the call to actually finish. And you see it still has the result of just the one. Okay, so one final fix here that we need to apply to the algorithm is to, instead of checking whether or not this is an array of integers, I'm going to check if it's an array of any for my nested array types. So with that final fix, we have the final result of this call with two nested arrays of the two and the three and the four. We get the result of one, two, three, and four. Okay, so that's kind of the final solution here. And let's kind of unwrap what is going on by going through a couple of different examples first. So let's use the first example of just the array of one. Everything is going to work perfectly as we 
iterate through the nested array, and then we just append it onto my flattened array, giving us just the one like that. And now if we introduce our very first nested array of the value of two, what's really going on is we first iterate with the element of the one, and we have a flattened array of just the one through the append call right here. And then through the next iteration of our nested array, we encounter the nested array of any for the array of the value of two. And in that case, we will execute the recursion by calling flatten array on the element, which is the array of the value of two. So what really happens is we make that call and the result of that call goes through that array of the value of two, executes the exact same logic, and we get the result of the array value of two and that's what recursion result gives us back. And you can kind of see it through this right here. And once we get that result back, we iterate through that recursion result, and then we apply the append onto the my flattened array. So that's how we get one and two. So let's go through this one more time with the more difficult example of another nested array with the array of three. So you can kind of see that the little uh, demonstration example on the side kind of goes away because it's going through this recursion step a couple of more times and it's going through that same logic where every time we encounter an array of stuff we make the recursion call and through the many many steps of recursion we eventually get another flattened array that we can iterate through and then all of that stuff that occurs inside of the recursion eventually gets appended onto my flattened array, giving you a flattened array of just one, two, and three with this example call right here. All right, so pretty good stuff. And let's just make sure this implementation actually works by introducing perhaps another nested array of four, and that gives us the four. If you want to introduce perhaps five, six and seven as my other nested array. You see that's kind of what you get. If you go into the very beginning and perhaps use another array of let's say negative one and zero and make that call, you see that this will give you negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, up to seven. All right, so I believe the solution that I presented you with today should work for all types of nested arrays. So make sure that you understand the implementation and make sure to leave a comment down below if you find any types of errors in today's solution. Make sure to go through the recursion a couple of times in your head as well so that you can understand exactly what is going on and what the recursion is returning to you as a result of the recursion calls. All right, if you have any questions, make sure to leave it down below. If you want the solution and the code for today's exercise, make sure to find a link to the source code down in the description below. Make sure to also leave a like for today's video and also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can find me at build that app. And also if you want to join the channel's Facebook group, make sure to find a link down below as well. Okay. So that's it for me today. Keep on coding guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye guys.